Hello, I'm Dr. Sandra Freihofer, liaison to ACIP, the CDC's Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices. Welcome to the American College of Physicians Adult Immunization video series. The topic, ACIP's new adult schedule for 2023, published in the Annals of Internal Medicine. Each year, ACIP updates the adult immunization schedule. It summarizes ACIP's most recent recommendations in one easy to use reference. The schedule has four sections. Table one, vaccines by age. Table two, vaccines by medical condition and other indications. Next is the note section with vaccine specific details in alphabetical order. And finally, there's an appendix with vaccine specific contraindications and precautions. This year's schedule is extra special. Some might even consider the new schedule a collector's item. This year, for the very first time, COVID vaccines made their front page. They're also first in the graphics and first in the notes. This edition is meaningful, symbolic, and also acknowledges COVID's here to stay. And it's likely most of us have not had our last recommended COVID vaccine dose. The schedule's cover page introduces this year's vaccines, their pedigree, their abbreviations, and for identification purposes only, their trade names. An abbreviation's been assigned to each specific type of COVID vaccines for mRNA monovalent and bivalent, and for protein subunit vaccines. Brand names, Comirnaty and Spikevax are also given for mRNA vaccines now FDA approved. Company names are included for those still under EUA, emergency use authorization. Please note that viral vector vaccines are not preferred and did not make the front page cut for the schedule's COVID vaccine list. However, Janssen's vaccine did merit a CDC website link in the notes section. Another new and somewhat unexpected inclusion is having COVID pre-exposure prophylaxis with monoclonal antibodies as part of the schedule. This would include products like Evyshell. They're included in the notes as vaccine complements for those moderately or severely immunocompromised. The schedule's front page is historic in another way, the reappearance of a vaccine we thought adults would no longer need. Polio vaccination is back on the schedule, but it's not in the graphics. It is listed on the cover page. Current polio vaccination recommendations are also specified in the notes. A third historic addition for this year's schedule is approval by the American Pharmacists Association. The pandemic has validated the role of pharmacists as established partners in vaccine administration. Before we move on to table one of the graphics, let's review the color code key. It's the same for table one and table two. Yellow means the vaccines indicated for all who meet age requirement. Purple means it's indicated for those with an additional risk factor or another indication. Blue means recommended based on shared clinical decision-making. Orange is for precaution. Red means contraindicated or not recommended. Vaccines should not be administered. Overlays on the red more precisely clarify whether a vaccine is really contraindicated or just not recommended. An asterisk on red indicates to vaccinate after pregnancy if indicated. And finally, there's color code gray, which means there is no recommendation or not applicable. Gray does not mean not recommended. Vaccines not recommended are color coded red. Now let's take a look at table one, vaccinations by age group. There's some minor word change clarifications on the overlays, but the most important change is the new row for COVID vaccines. The need for a two or three dose primary series is specified. Boosters are still wild cards. When to get them, what will be in them, and how often to get them is still being decided in real time. That's why the overlay says, see notes, which hyperlink to the most up-to-date information and guidance. On table one, if you look for yellow, COVID vaccines are a main event, but a bird's eye view of vaccines by age indications reveals a few more vaccines 
universally recommended for all adults of all ages, annual flu vaccination, intermittent Tdap and tetanus boosters, and also Hep B vaccination in a backhanded sort of way. For Hep B, for adults under 60, Hep B's color code is yellow, meaning it's indicated for all. But if you're 60 or older, you can still have it if you want it, no questions asked, even if there's not an additional risk indication. That clarification's in the notes. Pneumococcal vaccination is routinely recommended starting at age 65. Current recommendations for those not previously vaccinated have not changed since last year. But this blue is new. There's a new shared clinical decision-making option for those previously considered fully vaccinated. More about this later. Table two, vaccinations by medical condition or other indications has no new updates other than the new COVID vaccine row, but there's several interesting overarching observations. In the pregnancy column, live virus vaccines are contraindicated. That's why LAIV, MMR, and varicella are color-coded red. But MMR and varicella also have an asterisk, meaning vaccinate after pregnancy if indicated. HPV vaccines are also red with overlay not recommended, but also with an asterisk, meaning vaccinate after pregnancy if needed. Another observation of interest, the column for those with asplenia or complement deficiencies has the most yellow. These patients need flu vaccination, but LAIV, the live attenuated vaccine, is contraindicated. All other vaccines are in yellow, except for Hep A. The overlays for both men ACWY and men B remind us to check the notes for specific vaccine doses and booster recommendations. Next, the notes. Notes are the schedule's best kept secrets, especially if you don't choose to check them, and you really should. They're a treasure trove of great information. The format hasn't changed. They're still in alphabetical order, and recommendations are still organized by routine, shared clinical decision-making when it applies, and for special situations. This new schedule has edits and clarifications, as well as hyperlinks for more information. Let's review some highlights. For Hep B, Heplisav and pre hep Brio are not recommended during pregnancy due to lack of safety data in pregnant persons. There's also a reminder that patients on dialysis require double strong doses, a three double strong dose series for Recombivax, four double strong doses for Endurex. For influenza, the notes now indicate high dose, recombinant, or adjuvanted versions are now preferred for those 65 and older, with the caveat, if these aren't available, it's better to get any flu vaccine than none. For meningitis vaccines, I'll make a few observations about the notes. There are two different types of, men of meningococcal vaccines. One covers men, A, C, W, Y, another men, B. For men B vaccines, there are two to choose from with trade names Bexero and Trumemba listed because they're not interchangeable. You have to commit to the same vaccine type for all doses in the series. Those with asplenia need a primary series of both. Then men ACWY boosters every five years and a men B booster every two to three years. Both can be administered simultaneously, but at different sites. For pneumococcal vaccination, new options are detailed in the notes for those partially vaccinated using lower valency vaccines. The bottom line, you can substitute PCV20 or PPSV23 to broaden and also increase durability of protection. The details are in the notes. There's also a new option for those 65 and older, already fully vaxxed with PCV13 and PPSV23. They now have the option of getting a dose of PCV20 five years after completing the now extinct combination of PCV13 then PPSV23. That decision is between you and your patient. 
This is shared clinical decision making, which is why the lower half of 65 and older bar on table one is now blue. Outlines of these details are in the notes with hyperlink to complete recommendations. Pneumococcal vaccination is complicated. For guidance on what your patient needs and when, there's an app and the notes have a hyperlink to it. Polio vaccination has been added to the vaccine notes. Routine vaccination for adults is not necessary, at least for now. However, those at increased risk of exposure to polio is a special situation and may call for a single lifetime IPV booster or finishing your polio vaccine series. In response to the recent polio cases in New York, ACIP has reinstated its polio vaccine work group. So there you have it, my favorite highlights of this year's schedule. And don't forget to check the appendix of vaccine-specific contraindications and precautions. You can download the schedule to have in your exam room, but if you do, be sure to use a color printer to get the full graphic effects. And please, also bookmark it on your computer so you can take advantage of the hyperlinks. This handy summary of ACIP's most up-to-date vaccination recommendations is literally at your fingertips. For the American College of Physicians, I'm Dr. Sandra Freyhofer.